So this is actually a question I get asked a lot, which is how do we use TD Ableton to connect Touch Designer and Ableton? Now, the first place to start is that there's two key pieces of documentation you need to know about. The first one is the TD Ableton main help page on the wiki. You can get there by just going to the wiki and searching for TD Ableton. And this page is gonna have all the things you need to get started, such as system requirements, installation, how to update, just some general feature tour, demos. So there's a lot of good stuff, very useful to read this page. The next page that's going to be very helpful is called TD Ableton System Components. And this page is really good because after you've got a little bit of installation, you've got it all set up, this page tells you exactly what each one of the different components does. So for example, there's Ableton Song, provides these kind of information, Ableton Track provides this kind of information, and you're gonna see very shortly when we set this up that it's all based on pulling these different pieces together and getting the different pieces of data or sending data through them. So having this as a reference to easily see that, oh, you know what, the Ableton parameter, that's what this one does, and oh, I'm looking for MIDI, okay, I guess I can use the Ableton MIDI, this becomes a really important thing. So now if you are just getting started for the first time and you're just about to install TD Ableton, first thing you want to do is go into your blank touch designer project, make sure Ableton Live is not running, go to dialogues, we're gonna to go to the palette browser, and under the main derivative section here, we're gonna to go to TD Ableton, and we're gonna drag and drop TD Ableton package into our project. And it's okay that it's a blank project because we're just installing for now. So I can go ahead and close the palette. And what you're going to want to do first is click this install button here. Now, before you click this, just make sure if you have multiple versions of Ableton Live, you select the right one from the dropdown. We can see here it's automatically detected that I have Live 9 Suite. If you've changed anything in the installation, maybe you've done custom uh, MIDI remote script folders or custom preferences folders, just make sure to update those here. But otherwise, if it's just a default live installation, you should be able to pick out your version from here, click this install button, and it'll go ahead and copy the right scripts to the right folder. Now, once you've done that, it's pretty easy to actually get set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Ableton Live. Now, once Ableton is open, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the preferences. So we're gonna to go to edit, or I guess it's in, where is it on Windows? That's a good question. Options, preferences. And then we wanna to go to the link and MIDI page because this is where we're going to assign Touch Designer as a control surface. So behind the scenes, a lot of the control and listening that happens with Touch Designer coming from Ableton, the data coming through, is actually almost representing a MIDI system inside of Ableton. So if we go to control surfaces, after we hit that install button, you'll see that touch designer is actually one of the available control surfaces. So we can go ahead and click on that. We'll leave the input to none. And actually what you should see when you click that is that now it's trying to create the connection and this pop-up is from touch designer. And it's saying, oh, you know, you're using a blank project. It doesn't look like it's set up already with TD Ableton do you want to go ahead and create this patch and, and, and link them up? So we can say yes, we'll hit create. It'll jump you back to Touch Designer, but you can quickly jump back to Live. We'll see Max for Live is loading up here. And then once that is all set up, you will see on the master track, TD Song, or if you renamed it to something else, and you should see this connected status. Now this, TDA master component needs to be on the master channel of any project you're working with that links Touch Designer and Ableton through TD Ableton. But now essentially our, our projects are hooked up, right? So if we go over to Ableton or we go over to Touch Designer, we're gonna see the connected status is working and we're gonna see connected here. So there's a lot of different stuff you can now do with TD Ableton. And this is why the second page, the TD Ableton system component section is so important because there is a lot of functionality built into TD Ableton, which I think scares off a lot of new users. And it can sometimes even be confusing for pros just because there are so many different things that are happening at the same time. 
So what I'm gonna do really quickly just inside of Ableton is maybe drag in a couple of clips here just so that we have something to work with. I don't really know what any of these clips are and it almost doesn't matter. So I'm also gonna turn my master volume down because we don't really need any of the master channel playing right now. So now what we can do is I'm gonna delete these four original channels and let's pretend this is our session. And this is really simple. I know it's a little simple, but it'll be a good example session. So what I'm gonna do is move everything to the left over here and I'm gonna put touch designer on the right side of my screen just so I can see what's happening. I'm gonna turn off these sends and returns inside of Ableton. Make this a little smaller just so I can see all four of my channels. Great, so a couple of useful things that you're probably going to want to do from Ableton. First, you may wanna create some kind of effect, visual effect, or even generative patterns that are reacting to the beats. You know, this is very common if you're VJing or anything like that. And the way we use TD Ableton package inside of a project is that inside of it are a bunch of components. Now, we're not gonna actually work inside of the TD Ableton package. The purpose of these components is that wherever we are going to use them, we're going to copy one of the individual components from here. And you can see we have all different types of ones. We've got Ableton songs, we've got ones for controlling tracks, ones for looking at audio chains, one specifically for clip slots, all kinds of different options. Again, I can't stress enough how important the TD Ableton system components page is because it really just describes quickly what all of these different Ableton functionality components do. So let's say, for example, I take Ableton Song, which gives you kind of a high level overview of the project and its play state. What I would do to use this is first I would copy it. Then I'd go up a level outside of TD Ableton package. What I would do here is make a new container for kind of my work and my project. I'd go inside of it and I'd paste down my Ableton Song. Now, one thing you should be careful about is not to try and replicate too many of these because each one of these Ableton songs or any of the Ableton components you bring in are gonna be doing some processing behind the scenes. So ideally, you'll make one area in your project where you have all of your Ableton connectivity. And then for the rest of your project, you can use select dats or select chops to pull a lot of that information to different places. So in this case, I have Ableton song and it's really not doing anything yet. But if I start my timeline, all of a sudden we can see a lot of things happening. We can see the song tempo here is set to 70 BPM. We can see song play state is set to one because it's playing. We can see the song beats. It's on beat one, two, three, four. We can see what bar it's on, the subdivisions, uh, the time stamp. So in seconds, how far it is in this playing session. And even with this, just this basic, basic thing, you could make some really interesting content. So for example, if I wanted to take this beat channel here and then on every beat do something really simple like control the opacity of a video or the brightness of a video, all I have to do is go to the first output, create a null chop so I can see the output of it. Here's all that data ready to use. So I wanna select out the song info beats so I'll make a select chop. And then in the channel names, I'll click the little triangle and select song info beats. And then really it's as simple as doing something like maybe putting a logic chop. And the logic chop has a really helpful thing. We can convert the input to be on when value changed. And if I make a trail chop, to monitor this, it's really interesting because what we can see is if I plug in my beats, we can see it goes one, two, three, four. And then if I plug in my logic to the second input, we can see essentially what the logic is doing is giving me a quick pulse whenever the beat changes, which is perfect. So what I could do is, let me put another null chop after here because that is a good thing to do before mapping any parameters. And what I'll do is I'll make a movie file in just as a quick test here, let me pick a nature movie. And then let me put something like a level top after it. 
And then let's say we want to control the opacity and we want to have this kind of, you know, with the beat of the song, kind of just pulse on and off. So what I could do is grab the value from my null, drag and drop it onto my opacity, and drop that chop reference. Now the first thing we're going to see is, yes, it works, but it doesn't quite look that good. And this is where once we're in this chop space, it's really easy to smooth out values, do different things to the parameters. So for example, one thing we could do here is insert, we're going to right click on the wire, insert operator, and we'll put a lag chop. And lag chop is really nice because it, what it allows us to do is smooth out some values based on whether they're incrementing or decrementing. And this is why we have two different lag values here. So probably what I want to do is have it actually shoot up really quick and then have a nice little tail down. So we want the up direction to have no filtering and the downward direction to have a bunch of filtering. So what I can do is for the first lag value, set it to zero. So it instantly turns on. And then for the second lag value, I can make this actually a bigger number. So maybe even something like one. And you can see already just with that simple lag chop, we've already got something that is pulsing to the beat of the song. And the nice thing is when you're using TD Ableton, so actually let me set this to my background so we can see it. You know, everything is dynamic. So if all of a sudden we're in Ableton or, you know, we have a performer in Ableton and they are saying, you know what, let's, let's turn it up 128. All of a sudden they change the session to 128 and we don't have to worry about doing any tap tempo or anything like that because we're pulling all of that data live from Ableton. And you could see the second I changed this, you know, we'll change it back to 60. It immediately changes tempo. Our beats are coming in at the right time. And no matter what we do here, you know, we can go crazy up and down dynamically. We're always going to be in sync. And that's really one of the beautiful things about TD Ableton is having that direct connection to Ableton. So another thing that's probably going to be very common that folks want to do is maybe get some of the audio levels from some tracks. And this can actually be really easy. So what I'll do is first go back up a level. I'll go into my TD Ableton package. And you can think of this as kind of like your general repository. You want a tool, you go in there, you copy it, you bring it out. I can go down and get one called Ableton Level. So let me copy this, go back up a level, go into my container, and let me paste Ableton Level in here. Now the first thing I like to do with Ableton Level is first change the output type to be specific TDA level device. And then what we can do is select a track. And the really cool thing is this is dynamic. So, excuse me, based on whatever tracks we have in the project, we're going to see all of those reflected here. So if I went ahead and, you know, made a quick new track here and I came back to my Ableton rack, I would see, oh, five audio now appeared. So let's say I want to get the audio from four audio. I'd click on that. Device says none because there's no device on it yet. So what I can do is go to this button down here, add TDA level device, click pulse, and you can see behind the scenes, all the magic, it went onto that track, it created a TDA level device, and now I can see some data being sent back to Touch Designer. Now the really cool thing is right now it's not seeing anything because I don't have any clips playing, but let's say I start playing one of these clips, all of a sudden we have those real-time audio levels coming across into our project. So if we wanted to do something similar, we wanted to get some of that data to use it, we can make a null chop, connect the output of that to the null chop. Maybe then what I'll do is I'll make another select. And let me just grab the left channel in this case. And then you could take this and similarly to like we do with any other chop channel, let me make a null first. What I could do is just map this to something else. So maybe I'll map this to an edge top. So I'll connect my level to the edge, turn off the background, and then maybe what I'll do is I'll map this audio to the strength of the edge. So I can simply click the plus, drag and drop this onto strength, click chop reference, and now I've got not only audio reactivity from the beats coming in, but also audio, reacti audio reactivity 
on the strength of this edge. And you can see it's totally dynamic. So if I switch to a different clip, it's gonna change the pattern. If I stop the clip, no audio is coming through, it's gonna turn it off. And it's really easy to do complex things. You know, this is just a simple example, but using the same thing, you can pull all of the information from an Ableton session, from your performers in Ableton coming into Touch Designer for you to control in real time. And I think that's a pretty valuable thing. Now this just scratches the surface. We only looked at the very basic use of Ableton Song and Ableton Level, but I think a lot of people are probably gonna also want to use something like Ableton Track, which is a good one. It allows you to control different elements of a track and even launch and stop different clips. So if you're making a kind of permanent installation, you could very easily put a ton of clips into a track and then based on certain things happening inside of your project, you could use some of these callbacks with a very simple Python, you know, op dot Ableton, tra op Ableton track dot fire clip slot. And then you can put the index starting from zero and you could be firing off clips, creating dynamic generative compositions without too much headache because TD Ableton handles it for you. So with that said, I highly recommend folks check out TD Ableton. Remember the TD Ableton page on the wiki is the first place to start. It has all your installation instructions, and then you can use the TD Ableton system components page to use as a reference to see all the different possibilities that you can do. And remember, the way you use this, you go into your TD Ableton package, copy out whatever different devices you wanna use or components, copy them, and then paste them somewhere else in your project, and then go through the setup process of hooking them up to something. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.